This quarter, Mission Sunlight will explore distant reaches of the South Pacific Division. This division's territory includes the countries of Australia, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, and the Pacific Islands of Nauru, Samoa, Solomon Islands, Tonga, Tuvalu, Vanuatu, Kiribati, and others. Though the SPD offices are located in one of the most modern and luxurious cities in the world, it reaches some of the most primitive and untouched civilizations on the planet. The Pacific Island nations are religious people even before Christianity came to the islands. They believe in, in gods. Some of them worship sharks and you know, other animals and, and, and creatures. But we, right across the, the island nations, they believe that there is a God. And so because of their spiritual background, many of them are very keen to, to learn more about God. When it comes to evangelism, anything that brings hope and, um, and introduce God to, to them, they would sit up and listen, even though it may be out in the open space, it may be raining, it may be cold, it may be windy. People would paddle their canoe from island to island just to attend religious meetings. Telling the story of Jesus must be told everywhere, from island outpost to urban centers. We have looked at those centers in our division that have large urban unreached populations and are making concrete plans this year to reach four of our major urban centers and then next year to reach over 30 of our major urban centres in the South Pacific Division. But we want our growth to be much more spectacular as together we are revived and we go through a period of real reformation in our church anticipating the return of Jesus. Mission projects come in many shapes and forms. Jesus met the physical needs of those around him. This opened their hearts to hear what he had to offer to them spiritually as well. As we go about our daily lives, we are to emulate this example. The 13th Sabbath Mission Offering Projects featured this quarter will touch individuals, both physically and spiritually. I'm particularly excited about the projects for this quarter. We have the, uh, the, what we call the God Pods, which provide an opportunity for people who don't have access to, to written material to hear the gospel, to be able to hear the Bible. And that's, that's a great thing. Some of them have also already gone into isolated areas in Papua New Guinea, and people are really excited. The other two projects are our isolated medical outposts, putting clinics in places where people have no access to healthcare whatsoever. People come to us and are just so grateful that we're able to provide for their needs in this way. And, and thirdly, putting Bibles into the, the hands of children. What a spectacular thing to do. The church is going to benefit. The kingdom of God is going to be further established in the South Pacific Division. Our people connect health or good living, good life with the Creator God. And because of that, we appreciate the work of medical ministry in, in, within this division where our people, there are difficult places where we cannot be able to go and witness to them uh, or open up doors for our people to enter their homes or to, to actually be able to pray with them. Medical care isn't always easily available for families and their loved ones. Remote locations and lack of personnel can be a challenge. The Seventh-day Adventist Church wants to make a difference by meeting this need in as many locations as possible. In developed countries like Australia or New Zealand, which is not really that far away from, from countries in the South Pacific, um, when a child gets sick, um, there is a doctor or a medical facility just nearby where the, where the father or the mother can be able to take the child to. And so within, within a few minutes or within 30 minutes or within an hour, uh, the child can be treated. There are many parts of Papua New Guinea and other parts of the Pacific Island nations. People have to travel for, for hours to get into the nearest aid, aid post. Some places they have to travel for weeks and days to get to the nearest aid post. In many instances, patients will die along the way and the mortality rate is, is very high. And so in assisting them to, to establish aid posts and clinics in the remotest part of our nations, will assist them not only to, to be 
um, helped with their medical you know, needs, but for them to also have contact with the Adventist faith and belief so that they can be able to, to know that there is a God who not only cares for the, for the physical beings, but also for the spiritual beings. So by placing a medical outpost in these isolated areas, we're actually providing um, a life support, a life-saving center, I guess, for many of these people. Some of these medical outposts will probably be in places where we have a very small presence as a church. And so by putting a center in these places, it virtually flies the flag for the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And it says to the people in these places, we as a church care for you, and uh, we want to care for your um, physical needs as well as your spiritual needs. Medical personnel are needed to staff these outposts. When we put a medical outpost uh, in a place, it also means that we place a nurse, a community nurse or a, a, an aid post orderly or someone with a, a nursing background into that place. Uh, that person will generally be trained by the church uh, at Pacific Adventist University. Often we may take having a Bible for granted. In many homes, families have more than one Bible because they are readily available. For many of the children within the South Pacific Division, owning their own Bible is only a dream. The One Bible for You project is making those dreams become reality. This is a project that's aimed at helping our children have a Bible of their own. In some of these Pacific nations, uh, Bibles are very expensive. By the time they're printed, then sent to the islands, uh, the cost is escalated because of duties and other costs and this is beyond the ability of parents to provide for their children. The One Bible for You project provides the opportunity for these children to have a Bible of their own. In places like uh, Papua New Guinea, the literacy rate is quite low. While the country records a literacy rate of below 50%, the actual functional literacy rate is usually um, below 20%. And when we talk about functional literacy as opposed to literacy, it's the ability not only to read but to understand what is being read. With the GodPod program, we are able to put in the hands of people an audio Bible where they can hear God's Word in their own language. The GodPod project is basically helping illiterate people of the Pacific Island nations who cannot read and write but can be able to hear the word of the Lord. And this is um, a new technology of something just like, you know, the MP3, in which we have the University of pa uh, Pacific Adventist University that assisted the church in translating the Bible into pidgin, into one of the commonly spoken um, dialects in Papua New Guinea and Solomons and Vanuatu and um, also Steps to Christ which was also translated into Pidgin. These were actually stored in this um, iPod that are now made available to the illiterate people of the islands who can be able to just turn it on and, uh, and listen to the word of the Lord read through this, um, this, uh, this um, God pod. These three projects, I believe, are exciting projects. They go to meet real needs of people. In the first case, the medical needs for isolated people is, is a real um, important need of our folk in the islands. With the Bibles and having access to literature, whether it be print or um, to be able to hear it in their own language, is a valuable resource for our people. And, and we really do thank you for um, the support that you give to the church in the South Pacific Division by giving your offerings um, on 13th Sabbath and uh, we trust that God will bless you as you contribute to His church in this way. You can see how each of these initiatives for this 13th Sabbath World Mission Offering reflect the South Pacific Division's Tell the World evangelistic theme. We have been the recipient of 13th Sabbath Offering Overflows down through the years. All of those projects have seen amazing growth in our church, both in the evangelistic outreach and the nurture of our people. This one will be no different. Thank you so much for your willingness to participate with the World Church 
in providing these resources for our work in the South Pacific Division. We want to thank the World Church for being a family in assisting our other brothers and sisters within this division to come to know the Lord and to be ready for his soon return. Today on an island in the Pacific, there is a man who wants to hear the stories of the Bible. There is a child who longs to hold in her hands a Bible, to be able to turn its pages and study its truths. There is a mother who fears that her child may die from a fever because no medical personnel are nearby to give life-saving treatment. You can be the difference in these lives. Begin now to plan for the generous gift you will give on Sabbath, March 30th. From the South Pacific Division, this is Mission Sunlight.